Hi there, I'm Sumit Bansal and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to repeat rows in Excel using a formula. So I'm going to cover two examples. One where you repeat all the rows a given specific number of times, let's say repeat all the rows five times or 10 times. And the second example where you repeat each row the given number of times. For example, the first row is repeated two times and the third row is repeated five times and so on. So let's see how this can be done using a formula. Now, before I go ahead, let me also tell you that this can be done using Power Query. And if you're already using Power Query or if that suits you, then you can use that method. And I did create a video on that and I'll have a link in the description. Now, let's see how to do this using formulas. So I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is where I have this data and I want to repeat all of these rows, let's say five times. So I want to repeat uh, Spider-Man web development five times and Iron Man five times and Batman five times and so on. And the second example is where I have these rows, but I also have this value about how many number of times I want to repeat it. And you can see I have Spider-Man two times here. So this is repeated two times, then this is repeated four times and so on. So you can specify how many times each number is going to be repeated. So let me first show you this one and then I'll show you the second example. Now in this case, I have these rows. So let's try and create this formula and I'll first simplify the formula, use hard coded numbers and then we will make it dynamic and then finally convert it into a Lambda. So here I'm going to use the index function and as of now, this is the array. And let's say that I just want to get the first element. So I would use one comma one. And when I do that, it is going to give me this value Spider-Man here. When I hit enter, it gives me the first element, which is the first row, first column value. But because I want the entire row, what I can do is I can convert this into an array where one comma two is going to give me that entire row. So now when I hit enter, it gives me Spider-Man web development. So this gives me the entire row. This is just for one single row. Now, in this case, I want this to be converted into a formula. So to convert it into a formula, I can use the sequence function where let's start with one and then I need to specify how many number of columns I want this to repeat. So in this case, because there are two columns, it would be twice, but I do not know how big this range is going to be. It could be two columns, it could be 100 columns. So I want this to be dynamic. So in this case, I'm going to use the columns function and then use this array. So I'm using this array, but you can select whatever array you have. It is going to automatically give you the total number of columns and then this would work. So see what when I hit enter, it gives me the same result. But in this case, this has been uh, this has been converted into a formula. So this becomes dynamic. Now let's come to this element of the index function where as of now, it is only giving us one row, but I want each row and I want it repeated five times. So in this case, what I really need is an array where that array is something that gives us rows. So something like one semicolon, one semicolon, one semicolon, one semicolon, one, and then semicolon two, 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 two five times. And now when I close this bracket, you can see it gives me this result where it repeats Spider-Man five times and it repeats Iron Man five times. So I want this to be dynamic so that it is going to automatically pick up each row and repeat it five times or 10 times or any number of times that I can specify. So in this case, I want two things. First, I want these numbers one, 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 one. And then I also want them to be repeated five times or whatever number of times I specify. So let's make this dynamic and let's uh, use uh, the formula. So in this case, I would use the sequence function. Actually, let's do one thing. Let's create this part here separately and then I'll copy and paste it here. So in this case, let's use the sequence function where I first need to know how many number of rows are in this one. So in this case, I can just use the rows function and then select this range. So this rows function is going to give me a value, uh, which is 10 in this case. And then I also want each row to be repeated, let's say five times. So I would multiply this by five. Now, this is going to give me a number, which is a number like 50. And now when I hit enter, it gives me this entire sequence. But I do not want one, two, three, four, five. I want these five to be one, then the next five to be two and so on. So in this case, what I would do is I'm going to divide this by the same number, which is five which is the number uh, for which I want these rows to be repeated. So now when I hit enter, it gives me 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and so on. But I do not want these decimal numbers. I want one repeated five times. So for that, you can use the roundup function or I can use the ceiling function in this case. So ceiling math. And then the second argument is going to be significance. I want it to be uh, significant uh, to the value one. So it is going to round up everything 
with one as significance. So now when I hit enter, it gives me one five times, two five times and so on. And this is exactly what I want. So I can just copy this part and put this part instead of this here. And now when I hit enter, it gives me the result. So let's delete this and we can check. Spider-Man is repeated five times, then Iron Man engineering repeated five times, then Batman repeated five times and so on. If you select the entire thing, you can see there are 50 rows of data, which is exactly what we want. Now, in this case, if I want uh, these to be repeated, let's say 10 times, I can come here and I can change this five into 10. Now, this formula works, but we can make it a little more efficient by using a lambda because in this case, I am inputting this range three times and I'm repeating this, uh, the, uh, I'm repeating this number using this number five two times. So what I can do is I can create a lambda. So let's create that lambda and the lambda in itself is not going to do anything. This uh, the function, the formula that we have created that is going to remain the main formula. Lambda is just going to assign variable. So it is a little easier to use. So in this case, lambda, let's use the first variable as a range, first parameter as range, the second parameter as repeat. So range is going to be this range that has the data. Repeat is going to be the number, how many times you want to repeat the row, which is five or 10 or whatever number and then we will have uh, the formula so in this case we will use the sorry not this formula this formula here so yeah let me, let me copy the formula first so let's come here lambda first is range then repeat and then this formula now in this formula instead of a2 to b11 i am going to change this with range everywhere so that I just need to specify range once in the lambda and it will automatically be figured in the formula. And instead of five, I would use this word repeat. And again, these are variable names that I have chosen. You can use any, uh, you can choose any name you want. And now when I hit enter, obviously it gives me a calculation error, but what we can do is in lambda, we can now specify the range, which is this range. And we can specify, let's say, Two. So repeat each row two times. And now when I hit enter, it is going to give me the result where each row is repeated two times. But even better than this, what you can do is use this lambda and then convert it into a named range. See what happens when I go to the formulas tab and here I click on name manager. I have this name manager dialog box. And when I click on new, I can specify a name. Let's call this repeat rows one. And I can specify the entire formula here. So let's see if the formula is correct. Yes, the formula is right. So now when I click OK, this formula, uh, this name range has been created. And now instead of me using this big lambda function or even this big index formula, I can just use this one called repeat rows one. And I've chosen one because I'm going to show you another uh, example. But you can use something like repeat rows or RR. And then here I can specify the range, which is this one. And then how many times I want this to repeat, let's say three. And now when I hit enter, it is going to repeat all of these rows three times. So this is something that I've been using lately a lot. This has been helping me save a lot of time. And if you do not want to use Power Query or VBA, then this formula is pretty good. Uh, it, it is a complicated formula, a little longer formula. So it is a good idea to use this formula and keep it in, in a place. I keep it in my Obsidian Vault. You can keep it in a Google Drive, Google document or in your Notion. And when you need it, you can just copy paste and use it. Now let's see the second example where you can repeat each row the specified number of times. Now here again, I have the same data where I have the name and the department, but I also have this column where I have the number of times I want each row to be repeated. So in this case, I want this row to be repeated twice and this row to be repeated four times and so on. Now, if I can somehow get a numbering like one, one, where the first row needs to be repeated two times, then two, 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 for four times, and then three, 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 for three times. If I can get a sequence of numbering like this, then it would be very easy for me to get the rows because I can just use an index function to do this. So let's see if we can get these numbering. So to do that, I'm going to first uh, create the running total for this row. So let's delete this. And let's first create the running total and that can easily be done using the scan function. Now scan is a new Excel function and if you want to learn more about it, I have created a dedicated video on it. Now in the scan function, we start with an initial value. So let's start with zero. And then we have the range of numbers, which are these cells. And then we would have a lambda where we would specify the formula that we want to use. So in this case, it would be lambda, let's call it A comma B. 
and then a plus b. Now the way this is working is that the initial value is zero and this value is assigned to this uh, parameter a and then the and one value at a time from c2 to c11 is assigned to b and then this calculation is done. Once this calculation is done, the value of this calculation now gets back into a. So first it is going to give us two because it would be zero plus two. Then it is going to give us six because two plus four is six and so on. So now when I hit enter, it gives me these numbers. This is a running total. Now, when I have this, I still need one to be repeated twice and uh, two to be repeated four times and so on. So what we are going to do is in this case, let's just create a sequence of all the all the number of rows we want in this case. In this case, we want to create a sequence of the total number of rows, which would be given by the sum of all these numbers. So let's use sequence sum this. And now when I hit enter, it gives me these numbers. Again, this is not what I want. I want one, one, then two, 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 and so on. So to do that, I'm going to use the X match function and you can use the match function as well. Now X match function, my lookup value are these numbers, these values, and my lookup array is going to be this. And then I want to return a value which is exact match or the next larger item. So see what happens when I hit enter it exactly gives me what I want. Now the, the way this is working is it is going to look for the value one in this range and it is going to find two because two is the next larger value and it is going to return the position of this row number in this range, which is one. So for one, it is going to return this position, which is one for two, it is going to return this position, but for three, it is going to return this position, which is two. And then for three, four, five, six, it is going to return two and then it's going to return three, uh, three times and so on. So now I have the values that I want. So let's do one thing. Let's remove all these formulas and just make it one. So in this case, instead of e to hash, I'll put the scan function and here I would put the sequence formula and let's copy this and bring this here. Let's delete them. So just keep things clean. Now that I have these, I want to get the row numbers. And now this is a lot easier. I can use an index function to get row number one and row number one here and then row number two and so on. So let's do that. I would use the index function where the array uh, is going to be these uh, cells. And then the row number that I want to fetch are these row numbers. So if I just use this, and then I need to specify the column number. Now, in this case, I need to know how many columns are there. Now, in this range, in this uh, in this case, I have two columns, but let's say you are working with a data set that has five columns or 10 columns, then I want this to be dynamic. So in this case, I would use sequence, and then within sequence, I would use the columns function and then select this range. So what this does is the columns is going to give me the number of columns in this range, which is two, and then sequence function is going to give me uh, a row of sequence. Now, because I want a row of sequence, I would use one here and then comma column. So if I do not use this, it is going to give me the numbers in a column, but because I've used one comma columns, then this is going to give me uh, how many number of uh, value, the value, whatever value is here, it is going to give me these numbers in uh, a row and this is how it is going to fetch the entire row. See what happens when I hit enter? It gives me the entire result, which is this. So I have Spider-Man repeating twice, then I have Iron Man repeating four times and Batman repeating three times and that's it. I have my result. Now let's simplify this formula further. So I would copy this part and put it here in E2 and that's my formula. I can copy this, put it here and get rid of this. So I have my result. But let's make it even easier to use. In this case, I'm using the range in multiple places, A2 to B11 here and here. And I'm using this range where it has the repeat numbers in multiple places. So what I can do is I can actually create a lambda. So let's create that lambda where we can call it range and repeat. And then instead of A2 to B11, I can just use range. And instead of C2 to C11, I can use this variable repeat. Now, as of now, it is going to give me an error uh, because I have not specified the range. I've just um, changed the range and the repeat uh, array with uh, these variables. So I need to specify it. So in this case, I can just specify the range here. And then the second argument could be these repeat numbers. And now when I hit enter, it gives me the right result. Now, again, uh, as I showed you in the previous version, you can create a named range and then just create a formula like a repeat rows one or repeat rows. So let's do that. Let's copy this part here and let's create that. So I would go to the formulas tab 
in name manager i already have repeat rows one that we created earlier let's create another another one let's call this repeat rows two let's put this formula here let's check if it is right yeah sometimes it adds a uh, adds these quotation marks so i just check if it's right or not now when i click ok and click close we can remove this and we can use repeat rows two where i can select this as the first argument and this as the second argument and now when i hit enter it gives me the result and you can check this if i make this five it is going to give me spider-man five times and iron man four times and so on so this is working so these are the two formulas i wanted to show you to repeat rows if you want to repeat it uh, the same number of times you can use the first formula but if you have specific numbers by which you want to repeat it then you can use this formula i will have the link of this file in the description so you can download and get these formulas that's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.